Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about the DJI Mini 2 or any other DJI drone using the DJI Fly app. And we're going to be looking at the settings and the best settings that I recommend. So when you first get this drone, you'll see there's loads of different settings and then on the screen, you've got different on-screen buttons you can click and it's quite intimidating knowing what they all mean, especially when you're flying in the air, you don't want to press something by accident. So I'm going to be going through now the app, showing you my favorite settings, giving you some understanding of what each setting means and you might hopefully learn something new. So sit back, relax or go along with me, connect your drone up to the Fly app and we'll go through it together. Let's go. All right guys, so I'm gonna imagine now you've got the drone connected to the remote controller and the remote controller is then connected to your phone and this is how you're then gonna go and start flying. So when you're on the home screen here, you wanna click Glow Fly, which is in the bottom right hand corner. And this obviously, you should be outside, obviously don't be indoors like I am here. So when you click on Go Fly, this is the screen that you will see and you will see this for the whole time that you're in the air. So there's loads of different settings all around this main screen here, which is quite intimidating for the new user to see. So obviously that drone is on the table so you can see me here and I'm just going to talk you through what I'm seeing. So when you look at this first screen here, you'll see that you are in end mode by getting the controller and changing this to sports mode and to cine mode, this changes the different flying modes. But to start off, if you're new to this, you wanna keep it in normal mode, which is in the center. If you wanna take off, you can actually click this button here and that will, by holding that button down, which I'm not gonna do, that will then take that drone off automatically or you can do that via the joysticks. As again, as I said, I'm not gonna be doing a full breakdown of the whole app and how to fly it that will be in a different video so on here you want to click on the record button and that will start a recording or you can actually change and click here and if you want to do a photo you can move over to photo and then you can click the app and that will take a photo you can also do that on the remote control as well but by changing these settings here this is what you're going to be actually filming on so you're going to be in a photo or a video a quick shot or you can do pano shots so within here you can have 4k you've got 2.7k and 1080p 4k the maximum resolution it is 30 fps and in 2.7k it goes up to 60 fps and in 1080p you've also got 60 fps when you're also on this app here you'll see this little play marker here you can click on that and that will show you the files which you have recorded so these two little clips are just recorded there or i can scroll down and i can see some more of the recent footage that i have filmed and these are stored on the memory card on the aircraft and if you don't have the memory card inside you'll have dji fly cached storage which isn't as high a quality and it's a lot less quality so you want to actually most of the time get into the habit of when you're viewing any footage if you're going to be editing which is this create button in the bottom corner keeping that memory card within the drone it's a lot easier and you're going to get the best quality in this top corner here you'll see where it says end mode and you've got take off with caution now that's saying that for me because i'm indoors currently and i've got no gps signal which is telling me there so these are your pre-flight checks to do so before taking off always click on this bar here and then you'll see and make sure everything is correct there's no point panicking or thinking oh damn it i've not done that when you're already in the air and it's getting blown away and you've got no control over that drone or there's massive tall buildings and you've not set your return to home high enough so always get into the habit of clicking on pre-flight check my return to home altitude i've got it set at 50 so that's correct if for some reason that's set at 15 then you need to make sure that that's changed immediately you want it to be around about set 50 meters but it also depends heavily on the location that you're in if you've got really tall buildings in the area that you're filming and you were to lose signal is 50 meters going to be high enough to be able to get back to you without crashing into them buildings so for instance in that situation you'd probably have to increase that return to home altitude but make sure that these are set Every time is different, every location is different. So make sure each one is changed dependent on where you are. And then you'll see here, SD card, I've got no memory whatsoever left due to filming absolutely loads for the YouTube videos. But you'll see here, check up on this. So these are your main settings before flying. So you don't have to go within to the settings and change everything all the time, just click on that. And it gives you a good understanding of the main settings that you need to make sure are correct before taking off. All right, so that's your main page here so we're now going to move into the settings and I'm just going to go through some of the favorite settings make sure they're either ticked activated or explain what they are 
Okay, so just click on that top right hand corner now. We'll go through some of these settings. So safety settings, these are similar to what you've just looked at on your pre-flight checks. You've got altitude, distance, return to home at altitude. We've checked all them, so we'll scroll down them. So update home point. This is if you're gonna be changing your location where you're starting from. If you're gonna be in the same location flying and you're not gonna be moving, you don't need to worry about this. But if you're gonna be going to a location which is different from the home point, you need to make sure that that update home point is updated regularly. I've done a full video on this, which I'll link in the description below but that's if you are going to be moving location and that's a really good one to remember for those times where you're not going to be in a static location so compass normal this is where you can calibrate the compass of your drone if you're flying and you're say in your car or near a metal object you will get a compass error message so move away from any metal objects and actually it will tell you to do a compass calibration you click on calibrate compass it will then give you some instructions on what to do and then you'll start that this involves picking the drone up and then turning around in a circle, lifting the drone up to a different angle, and then also turning around in a circle. It takes literally 10 seconds. You can get into a good habit of doing a compass calibration every time you are in a different location. But I don't do that all the time, so I'm not gonna tell you to do it all the time, but it's a good habit to maybe get into. But if it asks you to do compass calibration or compass error, and you're freaking out going, what the hell does that mean? Just go into your settings, click compass, click calibrate, press start, do what it tells you to do, and then you're good to go. IMU normal, and we're doing a video on this. This is how to calibrate the IMU. So at the moment, mine's fine, but again, you can have some error messages, usually when you update the firmware, or if the drone is maybe crashed, or if it's actually been tilted upside down, you can get an IMU calibration error, and it'll ask you to place it on a surface, and then it will go through a series of different calibrations on the drone, and I'll also do a full video explaining how to do that. So battery info, this gives you some information on the battery that you're using. The new batteries on the DJI Mini 2 that I've got, it gives me the voltage and the battery temperature, how many times it's been charged and the production date. So if you wanna have a look at that, you can do. I don't really look at it a lot, but if you're gonna be using that battery a lot of the times and you're getting really low battery performance, by checking on this, you might see that those green bars are really low and it's gonna be a time to change that battery. Okay, so the most crucial one I would say that could save your drone, advanced safety settings, signal lost. So you've got three options to choose from. If you're flying your drone and all of a sudden, for some reason, you lose signal, what is gonna happen? 90% of that time, you wanna keep it on return to home. So if you were to lose that connection, lose the signal, if it's gone behind a building or something and it loses connection, or you're quite far away, or for any other reason, it's gonna return back to the location that you're in or the location that you've set. But there are times where that might not be the best option. And that's where you've got descend or you've also got hover. And you can change them by clicking on one of these and clicking confirm. You can't just click on it accidentally, it asks you to confirm that. So if you don't want it to return to home if it loses that signal and you want it to just descend, then you can click on that and click confirm. In the whole time that I've flown DJI drones, I have never used descend as an option. So I really don't advise using it. What I have used is hover. Hover and return to home are the ones that I use the most. On this drone, the Mini 2 and also the Air and the Pros and everything, anything that's got OcuSync, as you've seen, from my videos, it's very hard to actually get signal lost. The signal is so good on this. It's gonna be in rare situations, you're gonna lose signal. But if you do lose signal, you need to actually be prepared and plan ahead for what you're gonna do if that was the case. So again, think about the location you're in and think about what do you want that drone to do? Do I want it to return back to me or do I want it to hover in place? Again, that tall building scenario, if you're in an area where there's really tall buildings, is that drone, especially with this Mini 2 without any obstacle avoidance, going to be able to get back safely or is it safer to have it hover in place, you just go to where the location of that drone is and then manually land it. So again, it's all dependent on the location, but so important, this is one of the most important features and settings on this drone. You've got emergency propeller stop, you can click on that and you've got the option to either use it in emergency only or any time. Do not click any time unless you know what you're doing because this gives you an idea here by actually moving both control sticks down into the bottom and then outward simultaneously, it will turn the propellers off. So if this was an emergency, say something was flying to you or you've lost control completely and that drone is heading to a load of people, then you can do that and that will then cut the propellers off and the drone will just fall to the floor. But 
if you click it to any time use your caution, you could just automatically just do that just for some reason and that drone will just fall out of the sky. So I would only have it as emergency only, which it's set to and only use that in an emergency because if your drone obviously does land, falls out of the sky, which is what it will do, your drone's knackered, it's gone. Payload mode. So this is not for actually transporting milk to your neighbor or to your friends or anything else. This drone, we have to remember, is only 249 grams. It can't take anything and you shouldn't have any payload on this drone. This is just for if you're using something like propeller guards or you can get away with the strobe slides, something which you're going to add a dip bit more weight onto that drone. That will then decrease that battery, but the drone and the settings know the reason why it is. It's not the wind causing the problem, it's because of additional weight. Right, so moving on to control. So we'll just fly through some of these. So again, I'm just going to focus on my favorite features. If you want to change the units, you can. The front LED I like because you can have this set to either disable it, you can turn it off completely. You can have it on rainbow, so it goes completely different rainbow colors. You have a breathing or a solid. I tend to have it on a either solid or breathing, and then I have choose a color, and I usually have it on one of these blue colors I find is the brightest. It's really good because you didn't get this on the mini one. So it's great to have that light on the front of it. If you're having problems with your gimbal, you can actually click gimbal calibration. It will do a calibration on the drone. You've got to have it on a flat surface. But the great one here is allow upwards gimbal rotation. So by clicking on that, what it gives you is, so that is now set at zero, that's completely straight. What allowing upwards is, is this allows you to actually point the camera up like this. Whereas you couldn't do this before, you would only be able to actually face down. So by allowing that upwards gimbal, say for instance you're in a location and you want to actually point the gimbal up like this, then you can do by having that on. So that's a really good setting to use. Also a new one with this app now is phone charging. If your phone battery is low and you're worried about the battery being flat, you can click on phone charging and the RC controller will now power your phone and provide it with charge. So that's great, especially I've had so many situations in the past where my phone has been quite low and I thought I'm not going to have a chance to fly because my phone's only on 10% and now I have the ability to click on phone charging and my phone will charge whilst flying. That's great, great that. So we're just going to go through camera, making sure these settings are the same. Grid lines, I use grid lines to make sure everything's in frame. You can have your white balance set to manual or auto. I would keep that at auto. And auto sync HD photos. So any photos that you take on that drone would automatically go onto your camera roll. You don't have to go and download them again. So because the photos are really small files, I always keep that ticked as HD photos. So if I was you, I'd keep that ticked as well. It just saves you having to go in manually downloading every single photo if they're already there. The transmission on this drone, it's a dual band transmission now. So previously you had to switch between 5.8 and 2.4. If it was in a location where there's loads of interference, such as like loads of houses and urban, you'd have it on 5.8. And if it was in the countryside or really open land, 2.4. But th what this one does now is dual band. It automatically switches between both of the frequencies to get the best one. So you don't need to change any of that all the time. What I do is I have it on dual band, never change it. And another little bonus tip for you here is, this now, as you can see from the red circle, is in video mode. If you then go and click on the 4K button and put it into photo mode, and now click them three buttons in the top corner, click on camera, and you've now seen that you've also got the photo setting option. So you've got JPEG, JPEG and RAW, 4.3 and 16.9. So this is now an additional option that you get, but you have to select photo and then go into settings to get this. So I've got mine JPEG and RAW, you can have it just, just on JPEG, but if you want to have that more flexibility and for it to store more data in the files, so they're gonna be bigger files. So if you've only got a small memory card, then maybe it's not advisable. But if you like editing your photos afterwards, then RAW Photo is, is gonna be able to give you a lot more options and creativity. So I keep mine on JPEG and RAW. And then size, you can have it on 14.3 or 16.9. To get a nice wide shot, I always keep mine on 16.9. So that's a little bonus tip for there for you. So again, just before we leave, by clicking on the battery icon, it's on 80%. If you click on that, it will show you how long you've got until return to home, force landing and battery depleted. You will get this when you're actually in the air. Because I'm not actually flying at the moment, it's just set to zero because I'm not taken off. But if I took off 80%, it'd probably say you've got 20 minutes until return to home. So that will change by clicking on that. 
You can see that satellite icon, it just shows me as six satellites because I'm indoors. By clicking on that, it's actually five. It'll tell you you've got a signal, you've got a great signal, a good signal, and how many satellites you're connected to. The signal strength is strong because they're close by. So that's those main settings there. So in conclusion guys, I hope you found that helpful and I hope you learned something new. It was a long video, but I wanted to go through some of the best settings within this app. Some things that are absolutely crucial and making sure you do before you even go out and fly. So take care guys, go and check out the previous videos. I'd really like it if you liked and subscribed this video, it just helped the channel out a lot. I hope this weather improves so we can get a lot more drone videos out soon and have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.